working with multiple audio sources within Unity. To start, this video is going to talk about using multiple game object audio sources and then starting them at different points. The first of which will be an announcer voice we want to start when the scene starts. The second will be a background noise or a background sound in this case that we want to start a couple seconds after the announcer starts and the scene starts. That is, the announcer will say something for about three seconds, and then we want our background music to kick in three seconds after the scene starts. So two audio sources with two different starting times. So let's walk through how to do that. To start, I'm going to go ahead and import the two different audio files I want to use. The first one will be the announcer. The second will be the background uh, sound I want to use. So whenever we're using things that aren't game objects, we're importing assets. These are any extra data that doesn't already exist in the project we want to add to the project. Because this is an asset, we can use the asset menu up here, file, edit, assets, down to import new assets, and that will allow us to select the files we want. I'm going to go ahead and select audio introduction, which is a file I prepared before recording this video, and import. Then I'm going to go back up to Assets, Import New Asset, and click on Background Click and Import. Both of these files are AUG files I previously prepared, AUG Vorbis. And one is a quick intro that's three seconds long down here, three seconds. And the other is some background monotones, so we can just hear it. That's about 30 seconds long. So we want our audio introduction to run for the first three seconds, and then we want our background clicking to kick in three seconds after the start of the scene. So we're going to create two different game objects, like I said, and then add scripting to each of them so we can start and uh, stop when they play. So we do that by, again, in the hierarchy view, adding game objects. We want to add two different audio sources. So I'm going to go ahead and use the plus drop down, or I could have also right clicked, but I'm going to go to audio and then audio source. And then I'm going to do it again. Drop down audio, audio source. Notice audio source and then audio source one. Now I want to change the names of these so I know what they mean. So for audio source, this first one, I'm going to right click, go to rename, call this announce. For audio source in parentheses one, I'm going to right click, go down to rename, name this background. So we have announce and background, two different audio sources. So for announce over here, if I clicked on it in the hierarchy view, its components will show up in the inspector view. Notice for audio clip, it says none audio clip. Audio clip is where we want to give it an audio file to play. This is an audio source, but it's an audio source component as part of a game object. So until we associate it with the data, it's just a setup to do something, but it's not doing anything until we give it the data to act on. So in this case, because this is announce, I'm going to click and drag my audio announce file to the audio clip field right here and drop it. Notice audio introduction is associated with its audio clip. For background, I'm going to click on that and then do the same thing for background, drag and drop audio clip for its audio clip. Okay, so now for our two different game objects, announce and background, two different audio sources, we've set them up with the two different audio files. So that gives us a good start. So over here in announce, I've selected it in the hierarchy view over here in the inspector view. Notice for the different properties within the component of audio source, we have the audio clip, what we just worked with. And then down here we have play on awake. And if I put the cursor over this, it tells us that should the, should we play the sound when the scene loads? Yes. For our announcer, we want it to immediately, as soon as the scene loads, play this announcer voice. However, coming over here and clicking on background, we notice it also has this default option. So from the hierarchy view, clicking on background, moving over into the inspector view, we see play on awake, no, click that out. However, this is sort of our background noise or our background music. So we want it actually to just keep looping for us. So for this one, play on awake is turned off, but loop over here, if it should loop, we're gonna go ahead and turn it on. Because once we started, we wanted to just keep going until 
uh, the game ends or we stop it. So if we announce, we turn, we let play on awake turn on because we want it to start off. But for background, we turned off play on awake, but we turned loop on because it will be the background music that we'll be playing. So our announce is actually already set up, which means if we start this scene, and I'll go ahead and do it so we can see it in action. So if you couldn't quite hear that, it said, welcome to my game, it's so awesome. But notice nothing else played. It played the initial thing we had set to play on awake, but didn't play anything else. So if I wanted to uh, increase the sound a little bit so we could hear this, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Turn up my audio just a little bit to about 40. There goes that little noise in the background. Now we want to add a scripting component to the background because we actually want it to play on delay. So with background selected over in the hierarchy view, we're going to come over to the inspector view. We're going to add a new scripting component. So add component, come down to new script, and then if we can't quite access this, which sometimes happened on the keyboard, if we press the right or sometimes down to move between the search and then the new script, we can change its name. So this one, we want to call it delayed play because we want to describe what this scripting component, what this file does. So it's going to delay our play and create an add. This will add a new scripting component over here in the inspector view. And there goes updates, delayed play is the name we gave it, new scripting component, and its script is associated with the file over here. Now notice in our assets, we have the two files and new a new file, a C-sharp file. I'm gonna go ahead and open this. So double clicking on it within the project view. This will open Visual Studio. And once it's done loading and generating all the files, it will be ready. Okay, because this is a scripting component, then we need to write code that talks to its game object is associated with, because it is a component and not the actual game object. So under its start method, we want to go find the audio source component of this game object. Now that may seem kind of silly because isn't the game object we created an audio source? Well, it is, but this is a scripting component. So we need to go from the scripting component we are back to the game object and then over to the other audio source component. So in which case, what we want then is an audio source data type. So audio source, let's give this a name, call it background music. And then what do we want? Okay, so we are the scripting component. We need to move to the game object and then ask the game object to find its component that is of type audio source. There are a couple of ways to go about this, but one of the easiest ways to go about this is to use the built-in property game object, lowercase g game object, then use its built-in methods. So one of its built-in methods is get component. There are multiple versions of this method, but one of the easier ones to use is the one with less than and greater than signs. This allows us to, using less than and greater than, get a particular type of component by its type. So we want the audio source component. So audio source, and then this is a method, so open and closing parentheses at the end. So what is this doing? It's saying, okay, from the scripting component's point of view, go to the game object it's associated with, its property. From that, use the game object's method Go get a component that matches the audio source and then give me bas basically a reference to that thing. So from the scripting component to the game object, then over to the audio source. Now, now that we have the variable background music that is an audio source that is associated with the audio source component that is a part of the game object that the scripting component is also a part of, we want to delay its play. We don't want it to start immediately. Remember, we turned off play on awake, but we want it to start at a certain time. We want it to start about three seconds after the scene starts. So the start method will be called on this scripting component. And then we want to go ahead and, like I said, get the background music. And then for background music, so I'm going to go ahead and add this. We want a special method called, very helpfully, play delayed. And because this is a method, open and closing parentheses, and the IntelliSense says 
that just plays the clip with the delay specified in seconds, because this is exactly what we need. Users are advised to use this function instead of the old play, that's fine. Um, but what's particularly important is delay in time specified in seconds. So our announcer is three seconds, and we want our background music to start right after the announcer. We put three is the amount of time we want, and a semicolon at the end uh, to close this line. So starting from the game object, or starting from the scripting component, talk to the game object from the game object, tell it to get its audio source. We get a reference to that from the audio source. We call its method play delayed, and give it the amount of time, three seconds. So save this file uh, in Windows Control S for its keyboard shortcut, or also file save asset, um, which would also be for keyboard shortcut on Mac, Command S. So moving back over to Unity, we give it just a second to catch up and load everything. Now we want to go ahead and play this scene. So the first thing that's going to happen is our announcer audio source game object is going to play because it's set to play on awake. Then three seconds later, because of its scripting component, the background music should kick in. Let's verify. Not terribly exciting, of course, but we heard the announcer voice kick in because it has it was set to play on awake, so it played. We knew it was three seconds long, so we added a scripting component to the background audio source game object. In that, we said, okay, call its method play delayed, and we said it's play delayed to three seconds. So as soon as the announcer voice was, was cut off, the background music kicked back in. So this has been a video of using two different audio sources and demonstrating, in this case, creating two different audio sources, one associated with each file, then using the properties within the audio source for announce, we sent play on awake, so it starts when the scene starts. Then for background over here, a different audio source game object, instead of a play on awake, we set to loop, so it would keep looping for us. And then on background, we added a scripting component in the scripting component over here in Visual Studio. Remembering this is a scripting component, we said, okay, from this game object, get its component named audio source, get me a reference to it, and then call its method play delay, passing it in three seconds. So as far as the user player would be concerned, the audio was the same, but it was two separate files. One started at play, one started on scene start, played for three seconds. The next one was delayed by three seconds and then cut right back in. But as we heard, there was no notable, noticeable difference and the sounds played back to back. But were two different game objects, two different audio sources, one with using a property, one with a scripting component, but again, unnoticeable to the player.